Good afternoon, Year 13s. How's it going, everybody? Right, so today, Edexcel IAL June 2020, Paper 5. Going to run all the way through it, point out all the problems with Edexcel. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Edexcel hate me, by the way. Paper 5. Oh, oh. Going to run all the way through it. I'm just going to get out. rid of. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. I always have the YouTube video running just in, just so I can check that the sound is all on. Anyway, so, yeah, um, and I'll talk through any difficult questions and point out uh, questions that are heavily repeated. We know that paper five, uh, sorry, is, if I just put this as paper five, it's paper six. I'm an idiot. I've done it again. Misnamed it. Oh, no. Uh, guys, yeah, I've misnamed it. I don't know if I can actually change it straight away. I doubt it somehow. If I do that, save changes, I bet that doesn't work. Never occurred while trying to do this. I'm an idiot. I'll change the name on the, I'll change the name on the YouTube video after. Uh, so this is the paper six. This is the practical paper. This paper is the most, um, the, the biggest saving grace for all students. It is the most repeated, the most repetitive and the paper where you can pick up most marks by learning this by rope. They will, of course, still ask you those challenging questions, uh, and I'll point those out when we go through the paper, plus those questions which no one's really meant to know the answers to. I may even get them wrong. Um, anyway, let's crack on. Okay, so let's share screen. So this is the paper six, not paper five. I do apologize. That's going to ruin everything. Ugh. Okay, I'll switch my camera to my clip cam. Just so I can way on there. Oh no, I've got sweaty armpits. That was gross. <laughs> okay, guys, let's crack on. Right. Um, straight in. Hi, Kayan. Nice to see you. So, this is the paper six, the practical skills paper. I'm going to get rid of my keyboard. I'm going to grab my fan just because my fan does a really great job of keeping my laptop just a little bit cooler. And it means that it's just a bit more responsive to my, my, um, to my work. Okay. Let's crack on, paper six. Okay, so by the way, this is the June 2020 paper. Um, it's not available on the Edexcel web website, but if you go to um, uh, EduTV, E-D-U-T-V, you can buy them there for like $2. Uh, but there are, there are, the, the paper and mark schemes are actually on student forms as well. It just takes a little bit of time on searching on Google. Okay, so question number one, straight into transition metals, seeing colors all over the place. Compound A is a green solid, so it's definitely going to contain a transition metal. Yeah, TM. Uh, green solid, copper carbonate maybe. Green, I'll be green blue, unlikely. Could be an iron two compound. Uh, a sample of A was dissolved in distilled, in distilled water, forming a green solution. Aqueous sodium hydroxide was added to the solution. Uh, of A until there was no further change. A pale blue precipitate formed and a yellow solution. Okay, pale blue precipitate. So that's copper two plus, guys. Um, if anybody's asking what other pale blue precipitates there are out there, the, the answer is I can't think of any off the top of my head. So um, that, that's going to be the right guy. Uh, and it then, and the yellow solution also makes sense. Oh, no, hang on a minute. The yellow solution doesn't make sense at the minute. The pale blue solution was then separated and tested to be dissolved in excess ammonia to form a deep blue solution. Right, so the precipitate was copper, te copper to hex, uh, tetra aqua dihydroxy complex. It's nice to include the state symbol there of solid. And then it on excess ammonia, it transforms into the tetraamine. This is the tetraamine diaqua complex. That's what that turns into, and that's aqueous. Now, that's one that's heavily asked if I'm going to star these and tell you ones to revise. Copper is super common. I'm just going to get rid of that and check that I've got everyone on my chat. Kayan's there. I've also got DXE. Yo, DXE. How's it going, dude? <clears throat> so, Copper, heavily asked, and this particular compound there, guys, is super important because it's one of the oddities of transition metals. Yeah, it's one of the strange ones. Remember that when you, whenever you draw these, you do have to draw them in 3D. Um, and what ends up happening is you end up with three amine groups, three ammonia molecules, attaching themselves equatorially um, 
and then you have two waters left over axially. It's an oddity of the transition metal world. There aren't many others that do this. So it's something to bear in mind. That there is the deep blue or ink blue, sometimes referred to um, with copper. So when another portion of B was heated gently, the solid turned black, suggests the formula of the black solid. So the black solid is going to be copper oxide. Because what they've done is whatever they've done to B, the precipitate, they've heated it and it's gone, it's decomposed. And it's resulted in the black copper oxide uh, remaining. And that kind of makes sense. You're going to remove all the waters from the molecules. And then if you heat it enough, you're going to be reacting it with oxygen in the air. You're going to end up with black copper oxide. Can I just point out that black copper oxide is something that you pick up at GCSE? But you know what? sometimes even earlier, I actually teach it in year seven. When you're doing signs of a chemical reaction, we do a reaction where we take copper metal and you fold it over and you heat it in the Bunsen burner flame. When they open it, they still have the pink on the inside, but the outside turns black. So copper oxide is heavily asked and studied from early on. Excess concentrated hydrochloric acid was uh, added to a further portion of B and the mixture warmed. The precipitate dissolved and formed a yellow solution. Okay, uh, that's fine. So that's going to be your copper tetrachloride. There you go, and that is an aqueous solution, and that there is is yellow. Can I just point out, very unusual actually to see yellow. Uh, most of the time, um, you're going to have a small amount of blue left over, so you also sometimes see that referred to as being pale green. So they actually allow on the mark scheme, if you're asked to identify that color, it will allow pale green as well. But it is actually a true yellow. Um, so, okay, so that seems all reasonable so far. You've got to know your colors, you've got to know your complexes, and you've got to know your common copper compounds there at that stage. Okay, the solution C. So let's just consider what they did here. They had a green, they had a green solid. They added it to water, and what they formed was a pale blue solution, which is, oh no, hang on a minute, got to be careful here. Got to make sure I get my, the colors right here. We formed a green solution. And then addition of sodium hydroxide, we formed a blue precipitate and a yellow solution. So we had a blue gunky precipitate in, and in the background, a yellow solution. So we have two colors here to start with. Rather interesting. It then says that the solution C was tested. So they filtered out the, the copper hydroxide, taking the yellow solution. And they've added dilute sulfuric acid to the mixture, and the mixture turned orange. Okay, that identifies it for me. So what that is there is the yellow color is being created by the chromate 6 um, ion. Now, this actually makes total sense, because if you've got a chromate 6, which we all know is yellow, by the way, be careful of that, because there is also the dichromate 6, which is this guy, and that guy's orange. Now, these two are in equilibrium with each other. Now, previously, they'd added sodium hydroxide to form the precipitate, but now they've added sulfuric acid, which swings it over onto the acidic side, and, and what it does is it shifts the equilibrium. So before, what happened was the sodium hydroxide removed that, that uh, the sodium hydroxide removed the H pluses, and, oh, actually, that's interesting. Um, they added salt, I've added it to the wrong side, haven't I? I do have to be really careful with this. I do have to be really careful. Uh, I'm going to need to add water onto, oh, add the chromiums first, then add the water onto that side. By the way, I'm running my way here, the process of balancing a half equation. Now I need to have two H pluses on this side. So the, so the sodium hydroxide removed the H pluses, pulling the reaction over to the yellow chromate six. Then what they've done is so that was caused by sodium hydroxide which formed the precipitate as well. Then they've added sulfuric acid to this. Now the sulfuric acid pumps in H pluses. And then once the sulfuric acid goes into excess, it'll swing the equilibrium back into the direction of the orange dichromate. So um, this also explains why the original solid was green. Like this actually makes a little bit of sense so far. So it says um, the dilute sulfuric acid C mixture turned or orange. One centimeter of ethanol is then heated, turns green. So what was the yellow solution? The yellow solution was the chromate ion. And it is a, I've got to be careful here. I think I've just done a wrong formula, haven't I? Did I do a wrong formula? Chromate six, dichromate six. No, it's, it's correct, it's a two minus. It is correct, Di there's the chromate ion. 
So that's that one, and that's the aqueous iron of this guy. And then it says the orange color on adding dilutes or fluoric acid. So that's now caused by the dichromate. So they're walking me through. They're walking me through chromium chemistry, which kind of makes sense at this stage. We've been through copper. We're now heading through chromium. The green color after mixing it and heating it with ethanol. So it's being ox uh, so the the dichromate we know is an oxidizing agent. And it's going to oxidize the ethanol and itself be reduced to the green CR brackets. This is the hexa aqua chromium three complex. So chromium three plus is green. If you keep heating it, by the way, with more and more ethanol, then eventually it'll turn blue and you'll end up at chromium two, which is blue. Uh, and that's also a hexa aqua. They're always hexa aquas unless they're in these kind of odd, comp uh, kind of uh, co like larger complex ions shouldn't say that, rather more complicated ions, rather than being attached, I'll stop talking. Anyway, so suggest the name of the formula of the organic product from the mixture of green. So they heated ethanol and they've heated it and have heated it gently. Now that's, a, that's key to this because we know that ethanol is a primary alcohol and can be oxidized. First of all, under distillation, it'll, it'll end up at the aldehyde, ethanol, and then if you reflux it, it'll end up at the ethanoic acid. Where if you heat something gently, now reflux, yeah, you're heating it quite quite strongly. And you're, that, if you heat it gently, you're not gonna end up at the ethanoic, you're gonna end up at the ethanol. And it says, suggest the name or oh, oh, formula. So I'm gonna say ethanol there. That one, of course, is interesting for me because I don't think there's enough clarification there. I want to know if they're going to accept ethanoic acid. Yeah, I, I'm curious about that. I wouldn't put it. Uh, I'm, it's in my mind. I wouldn't surprise me if they then ask soon that they're going to say, oh, he's going to decide to actually reflux it. What would be the organic compound then? That would make more sense. Give the name or formula of compound A. Uh, who was A again? A was the original. So we had a cation. We had a cation. Got to be careful here. A cation of copper 2 plus. And we had the yellow chromate. Be super careful there, because you don't want to give them the dike. The original one was green, which we were a mixture of blue and yellow, which explains that. So the formula is just going to be CuCrO4. The two plus and the two minus is cancelled. Good old classic GCSE crossing down. Give a possible reason for the compound A is green. Well, Cu2 plus is blue is blue and CrO4 2 minus is yellow. A mixture of the colors, a mixture of these colors, of these colors, a mixture of these colors will be green, will be green. One mark seems reasonable. I wonder how much of that I needed. That'd be interesting to know. Okay, this question is about three organic compounds. So we know that for paper six, we've got these usual routines. We know that there's gonna be a transition, a heavy transition metal question with a lot of marks, total 10 marks for colors. It's a lot, lot for colors, guys. Yeah, that's a fifth of the paper. Yeah, now we're going into the organics. So it's about P, Q, and R. I always forget the letters as I'm going through, but anyway. These compounds are isomers with the molecular formula C4HATO2. Compound P is a colorless liquid with a fruity, sweet, sweet, fruity smell. So there's my ester. So I've got R bond R there. When the sample P was heated with sodium hydroxide, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna hydrolyze, we're gonna hydrolyze the ester. Yeah, a volatile product was formed which had a molecular iron peak of 46. I love 46. Do you know, I, I, I started teaching 46. I have a really funny story of 46, by the way. My year 13s and my probably my year 12s will, will know this story. I don't know whether my, my other half, Donna, knows the story. Um, but this, this I always talk about, um, when I was doing my biochemistry degree at Lancaster University, um, we had like this running joke uh, amongst my group of friends where everybody had a chat up line which had something to do with their degree. Now, of course, me being a biochemist, I had to have a like a chemistry based one. I was I'm, I'm much more of a chemist by the way than a biologist, um, but I had to have a chemistry uh, uh, like chat up line. 
And my chatted line was always that I'd go up to a, a girl up the, the the lads would choose, uh, and I'd have to say, "Hi, uh, excuse me, can I uh, can I buy you a drink with the MR of 46?" Uh, and at that point, I'd usually get a slap. Um, but that we, we always joked that the day that the woman said to me, "Well, actually, an alcoholic beverage is not 100% ethanol; it's actually a mixture of ethanol and mostly water, which has an MR of 18, which means you'll need to work out the average ML depending on the percentage uh, of the alcoholic beverage you're going to purchase for me." And at that point, I married that woman. It never happened. I never met anyone who said it to me. But it was—it's it, fun. So 46 for me is always such an important number because it's ethanol. Yeah. F and, and that's a really handy MR to know. It really is. Um, so we've got ethanol here, and it then says the mass spectrum of P. So hang on a minute. So we now know what the alcohol group is. Let's color the alcohol in green and say that we can add on the alcohol section of this ester here. Then what we can do is it says that the mass spectrum of P has also a strong peak at 43 to juice the structure of P. Okay, so we know most of this. And what we also realize is that we have to have this carbon here to have the ester linkage. Well, the formula was C4H8O2. What that means is the only thing that R could be is CH3. So then what we need to do is we need to figure out what that peak of MZ43 is. So the peak of MZ43, I'm assuming in terms of fragmentations, we split it along that bond there, I'm assuming that there is going to have an, uh, that there is going to have an MR of 43. So 12 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 12 plus 16. Can I also point out, by the way, they should all be point zeros because this is A level, not GCSE, but just for, you know, for time wise. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 12 plus 12 plus 16. 43! 43. Winner! So deduce, deduce the structure of P and justify your answer. Okay, so I'll get rid of that, even though we know what it is. We can now deduce the structure of P. So P is this guy. Um, I'm not going to straighten it out. I'm going to draw it the way I like to see it. And that, of course, is my ester. So this is actually ethyl ethanoate, which is, by the way, the solvent in superglue, if anybody's interested. That's ethyl ethanoate. Now I need to justify it. That's one mark. Where's the justification? Well, I'm going to justify it, first of all, and say that uh, ethanol, ethanol uh, has an MR, an MR of 46.0, don't forget the zero, yeah, 46.0. We can also then say, so that's bullet point number one, then we can say that CH3, CHO plus has, and now notice the charge there, that's, oh, hang on a sec. This is still in mass spec. Now, what that means is any species that you're talking about must be charged. So I can't write down ethanol. I need to write down CH3, CH2, OH plus. Because you need, without the positive charge in mass spec, and they know this, and that's a common theme, we know that mass spec includes fragmentation now. And we, we recognize that whenever something is detected, it must be a fully positive ion. Now, that's actually a very interesting ion because it's a parent peak, rather odd in fragmentation, just throwing it out there. Um, but, oh, no, they've hydrolyzed it first. I take it all back. But it's still unusual. Uh, this one, of course, has an MR of 43.0. Uh, that gives me three marks. The question is, oh, fruity smell. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, last one is... Um, P is an ester, which have fruity smells. Have fruity, oops, I can't spell fruity. Fruity, sweet smells. There we go, just about fit that on there. Moving on. When sodium hydrogen carbonate is solution is added to a separate sample of Q and R, who are Q and R? Effervescence occurs in gases evolved, which turns lime water milky. Really, are we still doing that at A2? Justify two possible possible structures of Q. Well, sodium hydrogen carbonate is the chemical test for uh, this question is about three organic compounds P, Q, R, which are isomers of. Okay, so they're isomers. Now, this guy here, guys, I mean, you should have all been learning your chemical tests here by now. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is the chemical test for a carboxylic acid. So these are both carboxylic acids with four carbons in it. 
So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the straight chain. Yeah, let's go for butanoic acid. Yeah, there we go. Draw them out. Put your H's on. Next, do you know I had a student who forgot every H in their exam? I'm just telling you. And the other one could be the methyl carboxylic acid. Put a branch on it. Oop, looks a bit messy to me there. There we go. And stick a branch on it. Add on all your sticks and your H's and move on. There we go. Okay, uh, and justify your answers. Justify your answer using the information. Uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate is the test, is the chemical test. I'm saying chemical, is the chemical test, chemical test for carboxylic acids, carboxylic acids, and the positive result positive result is effervescence is fizzing is bubbling <laughs> i'm suddenly thinking that i seem to recall on the mark schemes in previous papers i've done on paper six they're not a fan of fizzing they're more of bubbling and effervescence I, i'm so i'm gonna i'm gonna switch to bubbling Oh, I hate spelling effervescence. I can spell it, by the way. I just choose not to. It's a long word. Uh, results in bubbling and that gas and that gas produced will turn lime water milky. Will turn lime, oh, lime, not time water, lime water, lime water milky. And the reason being is due to co2 gas we're done okay oh okay proton nmr we know that this is the puzzles of a2 chemistry and they're tough so it says a simplified high resolution proton nmr of q is shown the relative peak areas are given above the sets to use the structure of q and fully justify your answer so q what did i say q could be q and r is one of those two uh, I'm going to say or, not versus, or, there you go. Um, okay, so if I ran the NMR spectrum on butanoic acid, if I ran the spectrum on this, I'd get one peak, two peaks, three peaks, four peaks. This would indeed be a singlet. That would be split into a triplet. This one would be split into a, ugh, um, a sextet. Yes, that is the correct name for it, by the way. And then this one is going to be split into a quartet. So there'd be four peaks, and it would be singlet, triplet, quartet, sextet. I have three peaks, not four. So it's not that guy. Let's run this one then. So that's green. Let's go for this guy. Singlet. Um, this one here is going to be a peak, and it's going to have, oh, it's going to be a septet. And this one's going to be, these two here are in the same environment. So they're going to be a one peak, but split into two, thanks to this guy. So I've got a singlet, doublet, and a septet. Um, so I've got singlet, doublet, and a septet, and the integrations match. So, okay, so we now know who it is. So Q is the branched carboxylic acid, not the straight chain version. Let's draw it out. Oh, running out of space at the top. Not great planning there, Mr. Duncan, but I'll get away with it. That makes it look even worse, by the way. Let's do that. They won't care about that. They'd probably let me off. Yeah. And then they're going to say justify your answer. And I would say, uh, bullet point number one, there are, there are three environments. Three environments. Let's highlight them just for fun. Environment one. And then environment two and then environment three. Three environments. Next bullet point is um, their, let's go for their integrations. So we've got an integration of one, one, and six. So um, the, um, I, I wanna say blue, but I couldn't do that in my exam. Could you go over the name of multiplets? I saw the mark scheme, saw, this is like heptuplets. Oh, is it a heptuplet? Not a septuplet. I might, you might be right there. 
I didn't think it was because of heptane, and I thought it was different. Um, I'll, uh, yeah, singlet, doublet, triplet, quartet, pentet, sextet. I thought it was septet, but I might be, I, I, I will stand corrected happily with a heptet, and then there's an octet and a nonet, I believe. Um, these generally tend to get classed as a multiple. It's just, it's, uh, and you know what? It even says that, I believe, on the specification, but you're, you're meant to know, does it really matter, though? Um, they, they, sh they should allow it, Kayun. They should. They should allow it. I think you're probably right, though. We can check. Uh, let's do a heptet. Oh, I'll try septet. Sept couplet. Mm. Sept. Chocolate is, I might be wrong. A septuplet. Oh, uh, yeah, that's definitely not right. Uh, septuplet. That's where I've got it from, from babies. Ah, septuplet NMR. Is it a thing? I might be wrong. Quint, oh, there you go. Quintet for five and a septet. There you go. Oh, that says septet. Do any of the others say anything else? Uh, this is the problem with the internet. Full of great chemistry, but not always correct chemistry. Um, let's go for splitting in NMR. Splitting NMR. Uh, uh, septet. There's a septet. Quintet, sextet, and septet. So it doesn't sound like it even matters. Don't worry about it, Karen. Try not to worry too much. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label these in my in the exam. I would label these and, and call this A and this B, and then I'd label all of these as Cs. And I'd say there are three environments, brackets A, B, and C. And then I'd say uh, the environment, environment C has... Six, six hydrogens, non-equivalent hydrogen, uh, uh, equivalent hydrogen atoms has six equivalent, that means the same, equivalent hydrogen, I'd write hydrogen in my exam, just speeding up, hydrogen atoms, the environment, the environment C has six equivalent hydrogens, so integration, what do they call it? Their relative peaks. So integration uh, would be six. Um, environment environment B has one, and uh, environment A has one. <laughs> matching 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 graph. Right, now the problem is, that's two pieces of evidence and I need the third, which is the splitting, isn't it? Um, um, so I'm going to want to say, these two are the most important. Yeah, so I'm gonna say the peak at one, that's one, so the peak at 1.3, it's a number that I know from Mark schemes, by the way. Um, uh, peak at 1.3 parts per million, chemical shift, yeah, 1.3 ppm. PPM is a doublet, and you just state it. And the one at 3.1 and 3.1 is a, it's nice to say it, a septuplet. Like it, septuplet. Oh no, septet. It was just septet, wasn't it? Was it a septet? Yeah, septet. Septet. There we go. Septet. There we go. I think that's going to get me all the marks, but we will see. I do love NMR. It's a fun game once you get good at it. Oh, no. I hate all of these ones. I'm getting all sweaty already. I've even got my fan on, guys. Oh, it's so hot. Oh, yeah. Can you do the aircon for me? You're a star. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Okay. 
I'm now pulling down my laptop as well as me. Okay, so the, uh, a group of students carried out an experiment to determine the rate equation for the reaction between, between bromide and bromate. Okay, bromide, bromate. I rec I rec by the way, I recognize this question. I recognize this question. I've seen this before. Where did I see it? Okay, and where have I seen this question before? Uh, procedure, determine the order of respect to bromate ions. Okay, so they focused on the bromate. Measure 10 centimeters cubed of aqueous phenol solution in a boiling tube, five drops of methyl red. The mixture turns yellow, which is the alkali color. Add five centimeters cubed of aqueous potassium bromide, 10 centimeters sulfuric acid. Boiling tube, mixture turns red. Fair enough, you added sulfuric acid. Uh, measure 15 centimeters cubed of potassium bromate in a second boiling tube, mix the content together, start the timer, record the time when the color of the methyl lead is bleached uh, from red to colorless by excess bromine. Uh, sorry, yeah, 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 be, be bromate. All right, so the bromine is here. It's going to turn orange, guys. Uh, it was on our, oh, of course it was. It was on their mock. Nasty question. Yeah, and you know what? I went through this on a webinar. Oh, that's going to be bad. I'm going to get these wrong, and I've already done it before. Ah -ha! Just shows you the value of doing questions multiple times. I can't, I can remember it vaguely, but I seem to recall getting lots of it wrong. We'll see. Um, potassium bromide, okay, repeat the experiment, different volumes, yada, yada, yada. Two hazards, warning signs of phenol. Ugh, phenol. Ugh. Phenol's nasty, by the way. Really, really poisonous. Like, crazy poisonous. I remember this question. Oh, I think I got it wrong. Which is the most important hazard associated with phenol in this experiment? Well, it's in a solution. Um, it is highly corrosive. Right. The other thing is it's highly toxic. But it, it says come up with a precaution. I remember doing this and there was an issue. Which is the most important hazard and what precaution you would take? Well, if it was toxic, you'd be like, don't drink it. Oh, hey, Winky, good to see you, dude. You'd be like, don't drink it. Well, that's not a precaution. Uh, like, don't boil it? Uh, keep the temperature down? I don't know. Uh, but if it's corrosive, wear gloves. So I'm going to say uh, corrosive, and I seem to recall I got this wrong last time. Corrosive, wear gloves. Can I just point out, it's also, it is also, phenol is also toxic through the skin. So, um... But not that toxic. Like, through the skin, it'll burn your skin before killing you. I put toxic, but was wrong. Ah, there you go. Uh, it is toxic, Winkit, but I think you'd probably have to put absorb through skin and then say wear gloves. Seem to recall that last time we did this. Explain the purpose of phenol in this experiment. Mm, phenol. Can I just point out, I have no idea the function of phenol. Phenol, like... You can use it in coupling reactions and forming azo dyes. Um, you could use phenol as a, you could, you could actually measure its acidity. What's interesting is it was when alkali, I, phenol was, is a slightly better acid than it should be, I think. Um, um, but anyway, so the answer is going to be in the text. And I remember this. I do remember this vaguely. The answer is in the text. Whenever you see something, if you ever get asked something, oh, well, what's the purpose of this nuclear? I haven't got a clue. And I haven't taught it to you, year 13s. It's probably in the text. Um, uh, the, so the phenol goes in. It's not even in the equation. So what's it removing? What's it, what's it adding? What's it removing? It's certainly not adding H+. Certainly not adding bromate or bromide. It does react with bromine. It reacts with bromine phenol to form a white precipitate. Um, so I'm going to say it's removing the, oh yeah, it goes into excess bromine. So it's removing, it's removing the bromine that's being formed. So explain the purpose of the phenol. Removes, removes bromine, whoop, removes bromine product, um, removes bromine product. Two marks, explain the purpose of the phenol in this, it removes bromine products. So when bromine goes into excess, goes into excess, I'm going to get to see a color. Goes into excess, a color will appear. A color will appear. 
which is your endpoint. Indicating, indicating endpoint. End of reaction. It's not endpoint, this isn't a titration. This is a rate of reaction. So it's just indicating end of reaction. And it's also when you stop it. So by the way, this is a classic rate equation because in rates, it's always changing product over changing time. Well, in this case, you're waiting for a color to appear. In which case, it's one over T, just thought I'd tell you. Suggest a way of making the appearance of the methyl red. Oh, so it's not the bromine. I tell, take it back, I'm wrong. The methyl red is bleached. Darn it. Removes bromine products. When bromine goes into excess, color will appear indicated. No, I'm wrong. Sorry, guys. Goes into excess. Um, methyl red. Methyl red will bleach. Wow, that's an interesting catch, isn't it? Will bleach so we know end of reaction. So no one stopped the clock. Suggest a way of making the appearance of the red, the disappearance of the color easier, a white tile. Nice and easy. If you can't see, see a color, add a white tile. Hi, Sadia. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. Okay. State why the total volume of the mixture is kept constant. Okay, so these are the students' results. Um, and once again, I do remember this vaguely. So the reason why we keep... So lots of students make the mistake, they now go, so we can make it a fair test. Guys, you're way beyond year seven now. <laughs> what we need to realize is that if the volume, if the volume, if vol is not kept the same, I think I wrote the same thing down. Did I get it right? I can't remember. If volume is not kept the same, then the time, then the time uh, for bleaching, for bleaching will change, will change. And we won't know if the change in concentration of the bromate is what's causing it. Yeah? Uh, yeah, the con oh, concentration. Yeah, concentration. Concentration of bromate. If it's not all the same, bromate ions and bromide and H plus will all be different. Unknown variable. I don't know that. Uh, that's that one there. I'd like to see the mask scheme straight away there. I feel like I've done this on the mock and I haven't made the change because I did this as an exam review, went all the way through, went back to it. And I haven't solidified that in my mind. That's something I need to make sure I have because this common, this question is super common. Total volume kept constant. This is common, guys. And I'm in doubt. I want to know, but we'll check at the end. It's not good. It means that I need to go back and I need to really enforce it. I'll, I'll, I'll write that down like ten times if I need to. Right. Oh, making plot graph. That's so mean. Right now, in the exam. Um, blimey, this is a pain. In the exam, uh, the, the pages, I'd hope they'd be next to each other like this. But if they're over on the sides, it is a nightmare. So it wants me to plot the reciprocal of one over time, reciprocal one over time, against Steve, against Sarah. Against, whatever word follows the word against is on the x-axis. Yeah, um, against bromate ions. Okay. So those are my two. So Steve is the one over T against the bromate solution, which is on the X. And the bromate solution goes from four to 15. Well, that's an awkward number. That's like 11. Ugh. So uh, how many boxes do I have? Zero, one, two. Okay, hang on a sec. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Need to go to 15. Uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Wow, using the whole page here, folks. Four to, oh, I don't need to. Four, I'm only gonna, like, gonna plot a graph to fill that much space. That's awkward. Don't really like that very much. It's enough. I'm more than half the page, so it's okay. I've done it now anyway. Next, I need to now put my units. We know this, this is the volume. Yeah, against the volume of bromate ions in centimeters cubed. So this is vol of BrO3 minus ions in centimeters cubed. 
Let's just check my iron is correct. Yep. Next, uh, this is horrible. Reciprocal one over T, 0 0.025 going up to 0 0.065. So, oh, 0 0.065. So this is the smallest and this is the largest. So I need to go up, I've got, let's do five boxes, 0 to 0 0.025. Oh, hang on a minute, I don't like any of this. I hate this, you know, because the point, the thing is though with this, let's take them all back by 10 to the minus two, 2.5, 2.0, 1.6, 1 1.4, 1.0, and 0 0.65. I'm just, guys, I hope you realize what I'm doing. This was a nice graph to draw. Really? It's growing. It's, okay, it's not actually as bad as the last one I did, but it's still horrible. I'm going from 0 to 2.5. That's 5 to me, guys. That's 0 0.5 five times. So 5, 10, 15, 20 doesn't fit. Doesn't fit, doesn't fit. That's a nightmare. Five, blimey, I don't like it at all. I'm not using much here, am I? That means my graph's gonna look like this. Yeah, and that's not half the page. My axis will be more than half. I don't like it. Mm, 25, oh, hang on a minute. I don't like it. Up to 25, up to 2.5. Up to 2.5. I don't like it at all. Not point five. Not point This, yeah, this needs to. I don't like it at all. Let's go to three. Okay, up to three. Uh, and that's therefore going to be one. No, no, no. That's naught point naught. That'd be one. That would be two. Yeah, and then naught point five, and then one point five, and then two point five. Now I need to label this axis, and I'm going into the. I'm got to be really careful here about the lines. So I've added the ten to the minus two in here, guys, to get these numbers to be relatively normal. So one over t. This is one over t. Uh, and I'm going to put s to the minus 1, brackets, s to the minus 1, and I'm going to put times 10 to the minus 2 on that. Okay, I don't like it. Wink it, I don't know why you like this so much, but I don't really like it. I think it's horrible because I'm not using enough of the graph. I might lose my marks here. Oh, hang on. Yeah, it doesn't work. It's a nightmare. Don't like it. Shut up. <laughs> okay, let's just plot it. I'm done now, guys. There's no point in me wasting any more time. So... 10 to the minus 2, yeah, so that's 0 0.65 at, so 0 0.65 at 4, 0 0.0, oh, 0 0.65, yeah, okay, at 4, so 0 point, this is going up by 5, so 0 0.64 is about there, okay, next one, tick him off as I've done them, yeah, next one is 6 is, no, is 1, 6 is 1, that's nice, take it, Six is one. Next, um, tick him off. Eight is no, is 1.4. Eight is 1.4. Eight is 1.4. There we go. Eight is 1.4. Uh, I did 0 0.004 per vertical section. That's fair enough, Winky. I think I'm going to probably lose this mark on scale. I, I hate these graphs. I hate them. They're hard. I've done him. Next one, 10 is 1.6. 10 is 1.6, which is there. That's odd. Don't like that. Seems to be off. 1.6. 1 1.4. 1 1.4 to 1.6. Yeah, okay. Next is 2 at 12. 2 at 12. And the last one, I'm going to lose the mark for scale. For sh oh, God, it's going to be really close. 2.5 at 15. Oh, 15. The next one's 15, is it? Oh, yeah, 15 at 2.5. 15 is 2.5. There we go. I don't it's going to be really interesting that to mark because technically that's how much I've used, which is really close to half the page. Really close. I think I'll probably lose it. 
whatever, done it now. I'm gonna get the rest of the marks. I'm gonna lose one here. So now I need to draw a line of best fit. Um, and it looks like it goes through zero. Oh, does it go through zero? It does, shock, which makes total sense by the way. There we go, goes through zero. It's directly proportional, blimey. So the 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 rate one over time, the, oh hey Tanzi, good to see you dude. Um, the rate one over time is directly proportional to the to the concentration of the bromate ion. So it's first order. First order. It's gonna be really interesting now to see how many marks I get for that graph. That's a nightmare. Say the order with respect to bromate ions, just a fire answer. First order. First order. Um, straight line through origin. Ugh. Um. Concentration is directly proportional to rate. Uh, concentration. Conk of B R. You can't do conk in your exam, by the way. Concentration of bromate ions is directly proportional. Directly proportional. Proportional to rate. First order. The reciprocal one over T is used to measure the rate of this experiment. Suggest the assumption on which this depends. Refer in your answer to the shape of the typical graph of reactant concentration over time. So they're talking about half-life graphs. So zero order, first order, second order. Um, now, that's clever that I remember this question. This one I remember. Now, what I originally said was I gave a GCSE one AS response saying that in order to use one over T, you had to have uh, a fixed amount of product made at each time. And in this case, we do but they wanted us to refer to the graph. Now, the, 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 and they're asking for an assumption. Now, the assumption here is that the start of this graph line here is linear. Yeah, we have to make that assumption that the reaction, the, the concentrations that we have studied are all within this linear portion. Because once they start to slow down like this, it's gonna mean that, well, it becomes nonsensical. You'd have to do log one over T to get it to become a straight line. But in this case, we've got concentration directly against rate and it's come out as a straight line. Otherwise, we're gonna what looks like a second. So the assumption we make here is that, uh, suggest so, uh, and it says the shape of the typical graph. So I'm gonna sketch a graph, there we go. And I'm going to say, I'm gonna do that a little bit better. There we go. So this is concentration and, and uh, Reciprocal, reciprocal one over two used to measure rates. What is the assumption that when typical graph referred to concentr concentration against time, times on the x? Lol. <laughs> I love my little method, by the way. Steve against Sarah. Yeah, if you want to do Sarah against Steve, it doesn't matter. Whichever way round you do it, it's whatever sticks in your mind the most. I use Steve and Sarah all the time in my lessons whenever I do like, ah, oh, Steve's doing this and has any kind of like thought experiments. So I just go Steve against Sarah. So the, the word against Steve against time, time's gonna be on the X. Um, and what we have to, the assumption that we now make is that the linear portion, um, all concentrations, oh, it seems to have got suddenly smaller. Um, all concentrations, I don't know why that suddenly shrunk. All concentration, still smaller than I had before. Weird, that's strange. What's going on here? It's doing something weird. Okay, strange. Um, all concentrations, all concentrations chosen, chosen, are within, are within the linear, the linear portion of the graph. Moving on. Okay. Another student accidentally measured 8.5 centimeters cubed of potassium bromate rather than eight and run forced. Explain whether or not this needs to be discarded. The answer is no, straight away. The reason being is the bromate, the bromate volume here is a continuous variable. What that means is you can use any volume you like as long as you adjust for the total volume. Yeah, so because we, we did, the, the difference between these two here is three, but then the difference in these guys is two. It doesn't make any difference what the difference is. We would have plotted 8.5 there and just adjusted the volume of water to match, 
to make sure that the volume, the total volume is the same as all the asked. So the answer is no, it should not be discarded. I'll just put no. Why? Um, uh, concentration, volume of bromate ion is continuous. Vol of bromate, whoops, bromate solution is a continuous variable, is a continuous variable. A continuous variable, continuous variable, so any volume can be plotted. Any volume can be plotted, can be plotted as long as, as long as total vol, total volume is same as others, same as others. Adjust, adjust water vol. Done. Moving on. Well, all the volumes measured in this experiment were made to 50 centimeters cubed in a burette. Give a reason why you measure it and then put it into a separate boiling tube before, uh, rather than directly adding the reaction. Burettes are slow. Yeah, you never add. You never add a reactant to a, a rate um, practical from a burette. It's too slow. Yeah, you'd have to start the stop clock when half the burette was empty. It was weird. No, it won't work. Yeah, so um, reason, um, uh, what, what were they doing? Potassium bromate. Uh, switch down to smaller again. Potassium bromate. Potassium bromate would be added too slowly. Would be added too slowly. Done. One more. Um, give two reasons why run one has the lowest uncertainty. The lowest uncertainty, the biggest margin of error. Run one. Run one. Loads of bromate, still small time, no water. Because in all the rest, just to point out, in all the rest, you've got to add four volumes of liquid. What that means is error, 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 error. There are four points of error and possibly some being having to record the volume taken twice, such as the burette. Yeah, so four points of error here, but at least if the, the first one has no water. So we've now only got three sources of error at this stage. That's better. Yeah, and also the time is the smallest, so it's going to have the biggest, the biggest percentage error on the timings. Two marks. Uh, shortest time, shortest measured time, measured time, so highest percentage error, percentage error, error on time. Next one, um, no water added, no water added, oh, hang on a minute. That doesn't make any sense because that error is bad. That error is going to be high, but with the water, that's better. Less error. Oh no, 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 I've got a contradiction. I hate when that happens. Hang on a sec. So just give two reasons why run one has the lowest uncertainty, the lowest error. So it's the most accurate. Shortest time, I shall highest percentage of on time. However, which is still going to be tiny, by the way. However, um, that's weird. It's weird, it's weird, it's weird, it's weird, it's weird. Um, I feel like I'm making a mistake here. This one's going to get flagged for me. Definitely. However, still stay late this time, go figure. However, no water measured. No water measured. So fewer fewer errors, fewer errors. I'm also then gonna say um, the largest volume of bromate was measured, so the lowest, the lowest error. May as well put three, suggest two, they're gonna mark it in order. I'm gonna get beaten, gonna get beaten. Don't like it. Largest vol, I'm, oh, I'm gonna regret that. Largest vol of bromate. Measured, measured, so lowest percentage error. 
percentage error. I need to change it. It doesn't make sense otherwise. I'll, I know I'm throwing it away otherwise, but that's a question of interest. State the changes that you would make to the procedure to obtain data needed to determine the overall rate of reaction for bromide, bromate in acidic conditions. So bromide needs to change. Bromate needs to be changed. Whoops, bromate needs to be changed. And H plus needs to be changed. So we need to repeat, repeat entire process, repeat process, process, um, keeping, keeping bromate vol static and bromide static and alter vol of sulfuric acid. Vol of the sulfuric acid. So that was the H plus that we needed. Next thing, repeat again, but keep acid, acid and bromate, bromate concentrations, but vols static, alter vol of bromide. Done, moving on. Don't like that question, that was a grim question, don't like it. And I've done it before, shows that there's benefit in doing something twice, but what, you what I'm taking on, point I'm trying to make here guys, doing an exam paper doesn't make you better. This is not, the process that I am doing is not the process you're meant to be doing in your studies. By doing 10 papers, you will hardly improve. What you need to do is you do one question to its completion and mark immediately. Make those changes. Write things down multiple times to solidify new data or repair data. So important. Oh, right. So all my students in year 13 are going to be now realizing why I teach this. Acid anhydrides are not on your specification at Excel, but you like to do them anyway. It doesn't half drive me nuts, guys. If you, if you say acyl chlorides are the only ones for nucleophilic addition elimination, then just do acyl chlorides in your question. It's not fair. I teach acid anhydrides anyway, and that's why. Paper six, new spec, shocking. Anyway, okay, 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 I'm not even reading it. Give a reason for placing the flask in cold water for, re for step one. Um, the reaction of anhydrides and acyl chlorides is very exothermic. Reaction, it could have been, if it had been benzene, it would have been to prevent multiple substitutions, but in this case, it's an anhydride or an, or an acyl chloride. Reaction is very exothermic. Exothermic. Done. Suggest the, if that was two marks, by the way, you'd then say the temperature may get hot enough to start evaporating or boiling some of the solutions, some of the uh, liquids. Suggest the purpose of the concentrated sulfuric acid. It's going to be a catalyst. What was the second step? <laughs> second step. Um, oh. No, 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 second step. Add ethanoic acid, benzene, yeah, okay, sulfuric acid, it is definitely a catalyst. They have, they're adding a catalyst to speed up the anhydride reaction. Show by calculations that ethanoic acid is in excess in this preparation, right? Ethanoic acid. So, hmm? Eth that what is? That the ethanoic anhydride, damn it. So the anhydride, it's got its MR, and we've got grams per centimeter cubed, and the anhydride, we took five. 1.082, 1.082, 1.082. We took five centimeters cubed of ethanoic anhydride. Ethanoic anhydride. Now its density is this per centimeters cubed. Yeah, so multiply that by 1.082 on calculator, five times 1.082, and I get equals 5.41 grams. Right, number of moles is grams over rams. Number of moles equals grams over rams. Right, so 5.41 over, what did it weigh? It told us in the book, 102, uh, 102, 102, 102 102.0. Divide that by 102, whoops, 2.0, go. I get 0.0530 moles, three sig fig. 
Next. Let me get some of these wrong on this paper, aren't I? Um, who was the other guy that we did? Uh, the other reactant was 2-hydroxybenzoic acid. The other guy was a, was a catalyst, so we now did that. It's got an MR melting point. We added 2 grams of hydroxybenzoic acid, 138. 2 grams, 138. 2 grams benzoic acid, 2 grams MR, 138.0. 2 divided by 138. Point zero, I have to go back and check, nightmare, equals 0 0.0145 moles. Now what you realize is that the ratio is one to one. I write that down, you've got to write that down. Ratio is one to one. So um, anhydride is, so 0 0.0530 is greater than 0 0.0145. So anhydride, anhydride in excess. Moving on. No questions on the chat yet. Okay, one student drew a diagram. The apparatus used for reflux in step number four. The mixture was heated. Okay, so identify three errors in the setup. Okay, first error, water in and out. That is one, by the way, folks. Do not think that's two. It's not. It's one. Uh, number one, uh, it's shrunk again. Weird. One, water in and out is reversed. Yeah, if you fill it in like that, you will get insufficient the water will drop straight down here and out the bottom it won't cool it sufficiently or efficiently you'll get insufficient cooling or inefficient cooling either one uh, and then your product will escape as a gas so the in and out is reversed number two they've corked the uh, the reflux setup it's going to explode yeah so uh, they um cork on a condenser Condenser seals system, seals system will explode, lol, will explode. I'm actually going to add water in and out reversed, so um, poor cooling, poor cooling of gases. Next, number three, um, they've used a conical flask instead of a pear flask. You never put conical flasks into a big boom, I like it. So if you got one point wrong for the other three, right, is it full marks? No, Ivan, you'd lose one. If you've written the wrong one, you'd lose one. Uh, you'd always lose one if you get one, get one wrong. Uh, conical flask, conical, con, whoops. Conical flask used instead of pear flask, instead, what's wrong with me? instead of pear flask. You never use a conical. It's a flat bottom, big surface area. Liquids tend to just vanish real quick and then explode real quick. Uh, suggest the purpose of adding crushed ice and distilled water in step number five. So continue warming the mixture for 10 minutes. Remove the flask from the hot water and add 10 centimeters cubed of crushed ice and some distilled water. So what they want to do is they want to remove the excess anhydride. Yeah, it's not cooling. The people are going to write down cool the reaction. No! If you're going to cool the reaction, you cool it from the outside, which is the whole point of an ice bath. You don't put the ice in it unless you're wanting to remove something. Lol. <laughs> it's very common for students to think that. Yeah, and chemists to boot, not just students. Um, um, added, added to react, to react with any left over left over anhydride. Now, what's clever is the water will remove the anhydride, the ice is to keep it cool. So I think it might be two points this, added to react with any leftover anhydride, um, added water to react with any leftover anhydride and ice to make sure, make sure this reaction, this reaction stays cool, stays cool. Cool, done. 
uh, infiltration in step seven is carried out under pressure. So this is called, under reduced pressure, this is called vacuum filtration. Precipitate aspirin crystals. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Um, wing kit. Crushed rice. Stand the flask in a beaker. No, it's not wing kit. Won't be allowed. Because look, stand the flask in a beaker of iced water until no more aspirin crystals form. So you won't be allowed it, wink it. What a great spot. Good catch, wink it. Now, can I just point out, wink it, you actually see that in when they do this in reality. Do you know what? It's really interesting that you've said that. Because I feel like they should allow it, wink it, because it's correct. Like, that is done. You do add, but you'd have to say add a minimum amount of cold solvent. Oh, no, it'd be solvent. It wouldn't be water and ice. It'd be a minimum amount of cold solvent to cause the precipitation. You wouldn't just want to dump ice into it. You wouldn't know how much water you're adding. It's a bad idea, wink it. But I, I understand where you get it from. Very much so. And wink it, that is an outstanding question. Well done. Commendation. <laughs> that even still a thing in our school? I don't know. Um, anyway. Um, state two advantages of this method compared to ordinary gravity. For, well, it's faster, number one. Um, the, um, takes less time. Takes less time, less time to filtrate. The second thing is it can also help, help in removing water. Removes water, stroke dries crystals. <laughs> Sucks all the water through it. I forgot that the water reacts with the anhydride. Yeah, that was clever, that wing kit. It was a really good suggestion by the, by you, though. Honestly, I'm really proud of you. Well done. Like, you actually remember doing this practical with us, with me, or even doing it on videos. And, um, yeah, I know that we, we tried to do this, didn't we, and failed. Um, anyway, removes water, dries crystals. Yes. Describe how the purity of recrystallized aspirin could be tested. Melting point! Experimental details are not required. Melting point test. Whoops. Melting point test. Sharp melting point. Sharp melting point indicates indicates high purity. We're done. Woo! Mark it, baby. Let's mark it. Let's mark it. You number them badly. Right, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, sir, can you do 2020 papers review or unit three reviews of AS? Can you do 2020 papers or unit three reviews? I've done the um, Sir Vigilant, <laughs> cool name. Um, I've done the June 2020. Oh, did I do the June 2020 or the Jan 2020? Um, I did the, mm, if I call them October again, if I can't call them the wrong numbers, May, darn it. So, um, Vigilant, I have already got on my YouTube channel, I've done units one, two, and three from June 2020. So I've done all three of those ones for you. Just have a quick, I'm sorry, I've called them October because I'm an idiot. Like, and I'm going to go back and renumber everything because I've just called them the wrong dates. Yeah, there you go. There's the paper two, and that, that's the AS one. I hope you find them useful. I'm, I'm going to do more of these. I'm gonna go and do the, the next year ones, I think, probably Jan 2021. Um, paper next, I think, or maybe go back one year, I don't know yet, I haven't decided. But I'm gonna be doing more over the next coming weeks. Yeah, so don't worry, your question is really, is, is you, your, um, your request is good. I will do as many as I can over the next coming weeks. Uh, right, let's go back to the top. Let's go back to the top. Okay, mark scheme, please. Now I need to shrink that screen down so it fits. Okay, started off with transition metals. Let's see if I know my colors. Know my colors. Don't know what accent I'm trying to do there. Right, let's find my red. Okay, so uh, is copper two hydroxide or the yes? I'll take it. Next one is the tetraamine diaqua copper two complex. Next one is copper two oxide. Uh, by the way, I preferred the formula on that rather than the name, because lots of people write down copper oxide and you lose it, because you have to say copper two. Watch it. Uh, and then the next one is CuCl4. Oh, I didn't use the square brackets. 
Oh, didn't need it. Oh! <gasps> first ever, first ever, first ever. I forgot the charge. Guys, I am not infallible. Far from it. Right, the copper two tetrachloride has a charge. So I'm just reinforcing my learning here. CuCl4 two minus. CuCl4 two minus. Let's explain why. Because it's a tetrahedral complex. And the chloride ions are all one minus. And the copper is plus two. The overall charge is two minus. I lost the mark for sure. Yeah, right, I'll take it. Absolutely not. Fix it. And I've written it down twice. Yellow. Yeah, I want to do that more. Again, trying to reinforce good data here. God, let's see if I make any more errors. Ooh, it's so depressing when I make a mistake. Um, vig vigilant, are you, are you sure you really want me to? <laughs> Uh, the chromate, I like it. Dichromate, yeah. And the uh, hexaraqua three plus. Ethanol, yes. Oh, did they allow ethanoic acid? They did. Uh, chromium two chromate. Give the formula. Correct. Good. Cu chromate of blue. Green is a mixture of colors. These ones are horrible. So, smell and formula. Uh, sweet smell, ester. Volatile product is ethanol or... Oh, so they allowed ethanol. They allowed it. Or peak at 46 due to the plus ion. I like it. They allowed it. Wow. Clever that. Um, the next one is this guy. I've made a mistake. Oh, I did it again. I hate that. I even drew it out. Look at that. I even drew it. That, I split it there, and I put a bloody H on it, because I'm an idiot. So easily done. Made a mistake. Come on, Mr. Duncan. I even calculated it and drew it and everything. Ugh, come on. Correct structure, though, which is good. Ugh, come on, Mr. Duncan. No more of these silly mistakes. Yeah. Um, structures of... Yeah, structures are good. Butanoic acid and methyl propanoic acids, those are good. And then meaning of carbon dioxide evolved. Well, that's just garbage. Reacts with this to form CO2. Stupid. This I'm gonna lose points on this one too. This is hard. This so we know we're gonna get the right one, I think. Oh no, if I'm gonna say um B2. This is B2, right? Yeah, okay. Three peaks in, okay, so I've got the correct structure. Ooh, why are they doing it after? I did it first. Three peaks indicate three proton environments. Uh, allow three types of proton. Okay, I'm losing it, taking it off myself. Three proton environments. Guys, I need to be more specific. Proton environments. Proton environments. Proton environments. Come on, Mr. Duncan. Reinforce good behavior. Um, peak areas indicate one proton environment with six protons. Has six equivalent hydrogens, integration six. I'll definitely give myself that one. And one that I'm at this match of the graph. And then the doublets peak at 1.2 and 3.2. I'm off, but do they allow values which are wrong? Mm -hmm. Eek. Uh, might want to check that on the, I think they'll allow it. I need to check that one. Check, 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 check. It's the numbers I'm worried about. I'm out by 0.1 on each of them. Well, does it matter? Don't know. My, my point was good, but I need to check. Ah, check. Check, 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 check. That's almost you need to check with that Excel, really. The exam, the mark thing is not, it's not very clear. Spectrum Q scores linked to the spectrum scores. I think I get it. I think I will get that, by the way, guys. So, but anyway. Uh, this question was grim. Corrosive, wear gloves. Removes, reacts rapidly with bromine. Allow, removes the bromine. Um, when all phenol is used up, so when bromine goes into excess, methyl undercut will change, bleaches it. Nice. White tile. Yes. Thank you. Right. So the volume of bromate is proportional to concentration. 
allow equivalent to proportional. I got it wrong. So the total volume, uh, the, the volume's not, if the volume is not the time for the breaching will change. Yeah, they're saying that I'm being too vague here, guys. So I absolutely got that wrong. And I flagged that point as well. So I need to make a point here. So if in rates, in rates, if we do an experiment, yeah, and we're keeping experiment total vol same, yeah, we're doing it so it becomes proportional, yeah, so that the volume of bromate is proportional to its concentration. So vol is proportional, proportional to conch. It's so we can plot the volume instead of having to work out a concentration every time. That's why we're doing it. Yeah. Total vol. Let me write it down again. Guys, I'm trying to fix this in myself. I've got this wrong twice now because doing a paper does not make you better. Marking it does. And making sure you solidify those changes. Total vol means... Means... Vol is proportional to concentration. Vol is proportional to concentration. We can plot volume instead of it. Okay, let's see that, see if that sticks. Graph, suitable choice of scale and axis. Plots together over, cover at least 50% of the graph in both directions on axis. Oh, okay. Well, I think it doesn't. I don't think it does. I don't think I've got enough here because it would technically go from there to there, which is like three and a bit. I don't think that's enough. I think I'll lose it. I think I'll lose scale. I think I'll lose the scale mark. Yeah. I'm not doing a very good job of this paper today. Uh, all plots are good and axes are good. Yeah, and they've even got the little bump up there, which is quite nice. Yeah, it's all good. So everything else is fine. Uh, it's just a pain that in it. And, and the line of best fit. No, there isn't even. Oh, and correctly, best fit line. Like this. Okay. Oh, he's got two. Grim. First order. The methyl is decolorized early in the reaction when the concentration versus time is linear. So the gradient of the tantrum is the same as the concentration over time. Yep, yeah, I'll take it. All concentrations chosen are within the linear portion of the graph. Do not award just concentrations proportional to time. All concentrations allow that the reaction rate is constant for a particular run using concentration versus time. Linear, so the gradient of the tangent is the same as concentration against time. It then says, allow, except this shown on a sketch graph. Don't want to say on that one, guys. It sucks. <laughs> uh, does it need to be discarded? Does not need to be discarded. The volume is a continuous, I've said a continuous variable, so the volume can be plotted as long as the total volume is adjusted. All data plotted on the actual volume solution is not important. Um, but the water, the volume of water added must change from 7 to 7. Oh, do I need to be specific? So the total volume soon must still be kept at 40 stays the same. I'm going to say add in a value there, add in 40 centimeters cubed. I'll give myself it, but I'm going to say I need to make an adjustment there and say, if you ever say total volume. I feel like I've, I've said exactly, I just didn't say they need to reduce it. Yeah, I'm umming and umming about it. The bureau rate would transfer liquid too slowly. The bureau would transfer. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, largest volume and lowest percentage uncertainty. Yes. Largest volume of bromate. Nice. Oh, bromide. Repeat the experiment for bromide. Oh, hang on a minute. Yes, for bromate. Yes, yeah, yeah. No water added. So eliminates. However, no water measured. So few errors. Fewer. Fewer. Come on, Mr. Duncan, be better. I'll give it myself, but I need to be careful. Next, repeat experiment with this and this. Varying volumes of each and keeping all other volumes constant. I, I've definitely said what I've needed to there, guys. 
When the reagents are mixed, the reaction is an exothermic reaction occurs. Catalyst. Right, calculation, give us a nice easy calculation. Very reasonable. Next, reflux condenser sealed. Conical flask used in slip pair flask. Reflux water. Water flow in condenser is incorrect. To react with excess add water, to react with any leftover anhydrides and ice in the reaction to stay cool. Ignore to cool the mixture. But it's to remove the excess of um, anhydrous. Uh, speed of filtration takes less time. And removal of water. Melting point determination. Allow melting point. Fine. Melting point temperature sharp. Guys, that brings us to the end of it. I hope you found it useful. It was a tough paper, that. Paper six is hard, but as I said, paper six, yeah, stop screen, uh, switch my camera back. So paper six seems really tough, and it is tough, partly because you, you know that there's gonna be a load of low transition metals, you know that there's gonna be a load of organic synthesis. You know, it's tough, but it's incredibly repetitive. The next paper six, I'll link it back into this paper six from that one. So anyway, I hope you found it useful. I'm sorry that I made some mistakes. As I said, I do these tests, I do these papers for two reasons. One, because I know that my students value me going through this. Wink it, saying thank you, I really appreciate it, dude. Um, uh, so you advertise this paper five. I know, which may be confused. I know, it's okay, wink it. I'm gonna go back and change all the dates. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like I said, um, I do this as if I'm sitting the paper because it has value for me too. You know, I've been teaching chemistry 15 years and that doesn't mean at any stage you're a perfect exam practitioner. So for me, it's good for me because it means that I'm learning those kind of weird questions they do. Oh my God, wink it. You, you wink it when, as ballistic as I did when he saw the block F. We had F block elements appearing in a, in a unit five paper. WTF, what the food? Like who does that? And Excel is the ones who do that. I, oh, it blew my mind. Very upsetting. But anyway, uh, also, did you see my question from earlier? No, what was your question? I saw a question on melting point range. If there is a range, that means that there are some impurities. Like, yes, that's correct, Winkin. Yeah. So melting points, so if you have, if you're doing a melting point and you see it melt, it, you should see it melt and it just liquefy very sharply. Yeah, it just go vanish. But what, what you tend to see is if you have impurities, you'll see it go to a liquid, but there are still crystals there. That means you've got an impurity with a higher melting point. And then you're gonna have to keep increasing the temperature until that melts. And so you get a range of melting points. I hope that helps. Anyway, guys, have a nice rest of your day and I'll see you all very soon.